Hi everyone, I've had quite a few messages from students over the last few days asking me to make a video on uh, rearranging formulae because they don't like doing it. And I thought, do you know what, I'll give it a go. I'm not a maths teacher, I'm a chemistry teacher, but I do have to rearrange formulae. So I'm going to show you my way of doing it, uh, which hopefully you will find super easy. Honestly, it really is super easy. I hope you like the video, I hope you find it helpful and if you're not already subscribed, why don't you subscribe and you can suggest future topics for future videos. Okay then, so let's get into it. So we'll start with a nice simple formula with three, just three terms in. So we've got N, which stands for moles, and that's equal to M, that's a lowercase m, which stands for mass, and that's divided by MR, so capital M, little r which is the molar mass. It's a really common formula we use. We use it in a lot of chemistry, but sometimes you might be asked to calculate M, the little m, or you might be asked to calculate the MR of a substance. Obviously, if you're asked to calculate N, you've got the formula there already, mass over MR, molar mass. So let's just suppose we want M. So we want this term here. We want to calculate the mass of a substance. So we've got to obviously get M on its own, making it the subject of the equation is what the lingo is. So how do we do that? So obviously the problem we've got at the moment is this MR is in the way, so we need to get it out of the way, we need to get it over to the other side of the equation, so that leaves M by itself. So how do we do that? We need to multiply both sides of the equation by MR. So that's what the equation becomes. So N times MR equals M over MR times MR. So we've multiplied both sides by MR. And the purpose of doing that is it enables us to cancel out the MR terms on the right-hand side, which obviously just leaves M on its own. So that means that M equals N times MR. Now, I'm guessing there might be some of you watching this out there who are thinking, hang on a minute, he said this was easy. That was a real clot on, a real pain in the backside. I don't have to do that every time I need to rearrange a formula. Well, I don't actually do it like that. So we'll just go back to the original equation, N equals little m over MR. We want M. Basically, we need to get MR out of the way. So all we do is take it up there and do the opposite of what it's doing on the side we're moving it from. So it's dividing here, so when we take it at the other side, it's just going to multiply. So we get that equation that we had with the other method, M equals MR times N. Now, in fact, we are actually still doing the same thing there. We are multiplying both sides by MR, but doing it this way is just super quick. So just before we move off this particular formula, I'll get you to have a think about one more. So let's suppose we wanted to find MR. So do you want to have a go at doing that? And then I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so how would I do it? Well, I want MR on its own. Now, if I took M onto that side, what it's going to do is give me 1 over MR, which is not really that helpful. So let's have MR on this side, which puts it on the top. And obviously we want rid of N, so we want to take it on the other side and it goes on the bottom. So that means MR is equal to M over N. So we'll move on to a formula that's got more terms in it. So this is called the ideal gas equation. Very common formula used in chemistry. Uh, I won't bore you with what all the terms stand for. Um, I'll just talk quickly about R, because you never have to calculate R because it's just a constant, it's a number. But you might be asked, or you will be asked, to calculate P or V or N or T. So why don't you use the method I've just shown you to find P on its own, V on its own, N on its own, T on its own, in that order, and then I'll go through the answers. Okay, so starting with P, it's quite a simple one, this. We've just got to get V out of the way. So what do we do? We take it over the other side, but it goes on the bottom. Moving on to V, virtually the same logic as before. So we need to get rid of P. So they're multiplying each other on this side. 
So we take it over the other side and it goes on the bottom, so it ends up dividing. So moving on to n now, so we've got r and t in the way, so they're both, they're all multiplying each other at the moment, so we're going to take them both onto the bottom. And finally t, so n and r need to be gotten out of the way, all multiplying at the moment, so we take them onto the other side and divide by them. So moving on to the final formula for this particular video, um, it's called the Gibbs equation. So there it is there, delta G. So this is one term, by the way, that's why I've used the same colour. So it's not delta times G, it's delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So T and delta S are multiplying each other there. So imagine you had to calculate delta H, T, and delta S separately. So we'll do them in that order. So again, if you want to have a go, pause the video and then play them when you're ready for the answers, or just keep watching if you think, oh, and I need uh, James to show me how to do this first. Um, then you could pause after the first one if you like, and then try the other two. So I'm going to do delta H first, then T, then delta S. Okay, so delta H is probably the easiest one because all we've got to do is move one thing out of the way. So you can see at the moment we've got delta H and minus T delta S on the same side of the equation, whereas we just want delta H by itself. So we need to take all of this over to the other side. So what's it doing at the moment? It's minus T delta S. So when we take it over the other side, it just becomes plus T delta S. So remember, all we're doing is when we take something over the other side, it needs to do the opposite of what it was doing on the side we're moving from. So minus T delta S becomes plus T delta S. So we'll go for T next. So it's a bit tricky, this one, because we're going to do several changes now. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take the minus T delta S term over to the other side just to get rid of that minus sign. So that gives us that there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this delta G over to this side and it's going to become minus delta G. So all I need to do now is get the delta S out of the way from T. So look at what they're doing at the moment. They're multiplying each other. So I need to take it onto this side. It's going to go on the bottom, and we're going to divide all of this by that delta S. So well done if you got that right by yourselves. Hopefully it all made sense if you were following me doing it. And as your confidence grows with this, you'll be able to do it really, really quickly. You won't have to do these three individual steps. You'll just be able to go straight from there to there. I promise you. So we'll finish with delta S now. So if you want to have a go at this, just pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so I am going to do this step by step just in case there's anybody who's still not quite sure of what we're doing. So we want, we're going to put this term on the other side to get rid of that minus sign. So it's going to become plus T delta S. I'm going to take delta G over to this side. So it's going to become minus delta G. And finally, we need to get this T out of the way. So the multiplying at the moment, so we'll take it onto the other side and divide both of these by T. So very well done if you got that right. And hopefully you're feeling a bit more confident about rearranging formulae now.